if you're if you're a if you've bought cars over the years and you think that the only way to buy a car is to go into your local dealership and say hey what do you have on the lot what do you have coming in i would ask you to just broaden your horizons and think bigger than that and and don't be afraid right we'll help you somehow come back to us at out of spec guide and send and, us an and, email um, send, you know, send us an email if you have a question i mean we we're, we're we want to help people sort of um do the right thing you know if the right thing is to buy an ev it's not for everyone um we're going through some challenging times here with respect to charging if you're not charging at your home every single day but if you really do want to make that leap we're here to help you with that so broaden your horizons a little bit don't don't be afraid to um change your your thinking as far as how vehicles can be purchased in today's day and age because it's actually really a lot of fun um shopping in your pajamas on a sunday on a sunday morning with a cup of coffee as opposed to just driving down to your local ford dealership um one last point i want to make max is that in the traditional dealers right now a lot of the corporations are approaching their dealers and they're saying look we're not even going to let you sell EVs unless you invest in the infrastructure to support selling the EVs. And that doesn't mean just putting in maybe a, you know, a 50 kilowatt or a 150 kilowatt DC fast charger. It means training your employees. It means yeah. getting all the computer, you know, computer equipment in, installed into your shop and having the knowledgeable staff that knows how to sell them as well. And I think that's a really smart move. Ford has been taking the lead on that. Genesis as well um, and, and Hyundai. And uh, I, I like that because it, it requires the dealers to make a capital investment in the future. And, yeah. and so you, you have to find out if your local Ford dealership is one of those dealerships that signed up because it's not cheap. It's millions of dollars they have to invest. And yeah. what I would suggest is if you can find those dealerships that are around where you live, go to that dealership, even if it's three towns over, as opposed to the local dealership, if you still don't want to break away and you know buy a Tesla or Rivian or a Lucid in the direct to business model, um, because that those people are going to be much more apt to give you that warm handshake feeling and say, yes, you want to buy an EV. Okay, we get that, right? Just some thought. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Spec Guide. I'm Max, and I'm joined by uh, Dave Connor for the first time. Hello. Max, how's it going, pal? Everything good? Everything's good, Dave. Thanks so much for joining me. So uh, for people who don't know, well, one, you're Kyle's dad, and two, you have your own channel, Out of Spec Dave, that I think is honestly, for a lot of people watching this channel, probably also a good one to consider. So um, where are you today? What are you sitting in? Yeah, well, I'm actually sitting uh, at my home here in Connecticut. <laughs> in a um, brand new Tesla Model 3. This is the this is the cheapest Model 3 you could get. I uh, just bought it, just picked it up yesterday. And, uh, you know, for those of you who may be watching the Out of Spec Dave channel, uh, this is this has been a fun adventure for me to to sort of go the opposite route of driving one of the most expensive Teslas, that being a Model S. And it was funny when I was talking to Kyle, I said, Kyle, you know, we're on the channels, we're reviewing real expensive cars. You know, you got the Rivian, you got the EQS, you got all, you know, Lucid. The, the, Icons, the Lucid, right? And, and you know what, I really want to explore, and I, this is my, this is our fourth Model 3, but it's the base, base one. I really want to get one with no options. And I want to talk about how much does it cost and how is it? And, yeah. and, and so what's, what's really um, it's been a great experience for me. And so far with literally 20, well, maybe 30, 36 hours with the car, something like that. I'm super happy. And, uh, we'll, we'll we can talk a lot about that, but I know today you wanted to talk about sort of buying experiences and, you know, and how does one navigate this complex world of combining dealerships, brick and mortar, with uh the internet and new sort of business models as far as how cars are sold today and what's really interesting to me is it seems that the pioneers in the space of sort of evolving their business model to how they sell their cars 
it, it's it's tended to be with the electric car companies and and so i know that's something you wanted to chat about so i'd love to share any experience i have with that absolutely i mean people looking at the ev market generally the most common thing i hear is just well evs are so darn expensive and it's true a lot of the ones we cover a lot of the state-of-the-art stuff is but the reality is uh, what is it? Model S has been out for over a decade now. A lot of these cars exist on the used market. They're there and there's many ways to buy them. And uh, you yourself have a lot of experience in particular because uh, you, to get your Model 3, like you said, you sold your used Model S that you'd bought from CarMax, right? Yes, I did. Well, I, I, I had them buy it back. And I, so in effect, I sold it to them, which is, you know, listen, selling a, selling a car, um, Oh, my car is going into uh, my car just changed modes on me. Uh, it was uh, it was in driver's mode. Now it just went into sleep mode. But um, the uh, what were we talking about? I'm sorry, Max. W uh, we were talking about just CarMax. What was that like oh, when you bought yeah. your Tesla Model S and then eventually sold it back? But when you yeah, get it to I CarMax, if people want the full story, there's a great video on your channel that uh, we will link. But uh, just as a summary, what was your kind of experience with that used Model S that got you into what you're sitting in now, this new Model 3? Yeah, I mean, look, it's it's really easy and it has been over the last two years to sell cars to services like Vroom and Carvana and driveway.com. And, and, and I just recently discovered CarMax as well uh, because they make it so easy. You, you, you put in like in Vroom, you put in your information about your car you take a few pictures they give you a price if you like if you like the price they come literally right to your driveway and pick up the car and it's gone i mean it just doesn't get easier than that and what i would say is that for some people that just don't want the hassle of selling a car it's a it's a great service but the most important thing is cars are expensive max i mean they've yeah. they've gotten real expensive i don't care if they're evs especially EVs, but internal combustion engine cars as well. These, these are, you know, generally speaking, besides your, your place of residence, your home, usually some of the, you know, the second most expensive, and I hate to use the word investment because they're typically not investments, uh, but they're the, one of the largest expenditures that you make. So when you go to sell a car, you want to be ready to at least make sure that you're getting the most money that you can for that car. And so over the last couple of years, it's been super easy. I've told all my friends, if you're looking to sell a car, don't even try to sell it privately. Just just get it over to whether it's CarMax or Vroom or Carvana and, and shop, shop one night in your bedroom from your laptop. Yeah. and and comparison shopping and and they're all they all have been super good now <laughs> prices have fallen through sort of the floor over the last six months the good old days seven months ago you could do that today you got to be very careful because prices are down but the carmax experience was a very good one for me both on the buy side and the sell side because they just made it super easy uh, to deal with. And so I was, I was very happy with CarMax. I never dealt with CarMax in the past. Um, I've known about them. I've driven by their dealerships. They always look very clean and they always got hundreds of cars on the lot. What I didn't realize was that the, the founder of CarMax was actually, I think the guy that started circuit city back in Virginia. Oh, and, wow. and, and so you know, when you think about Circuit City, Best Buy, and 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 sort of taking that modular approach to selling, in effect, it, it's like CarMax is like buying a brand new car, but it, they're all used cars, and and they have perfected that really well. Um, you will probably pay a little bit more on average at CarMax, but you are going to get some good guarantees, and you can check out my channel as far as why i think carmax and i'm not endorsed by them at all i mean i i'm really not endorsed you know or sponsored by anybody um with respect to this i just i'm just giving you my honest gut feeling about about the uh the organization so yeah, yeah i just went through selling my model s back to them and uh they made it they made it super easy to deal with
Yeah, when it comes to used inventory, I always think, yeah, CarMax, Carvana, Shift, Room. I mean, I kind of group them together. I know there's some differences and they some of them have slightly different business models, but generally the way I would summarize these used car buying sites is like you said, Dave, it's probably the easiest thing for most people who aren't nerds like us who spend their time looking at cars online. It's for people who just want to, you know, I have my car in my driveway. I paid it off. I want to sell it. Let's say maybe get an EV. Uh, if you wanted to trade it and then get an EV through a used um, third party auction or like buying site, this is probably the easiest way to do it. I mean, they take yeah. care of you. They have a decent warranty. Yes, you're not. It's I don't I don't know if it's necessarily as good as buying, let's say, direct from Tesla's used inventory because they might not know as much about the particular car. But if you know enough about the car you're buying and you have their warranty, that's kind of a good deal. Right. So that, that look, that's a great point. You, you know, we as consumers are have the ability to be very empowered with something called the Internet. I don't know if you've checked it out yet, Max, but it's really cool. I've heard of this it. Thing. Yeah. You can go online and get lots of information. <laughs> All kidding aside, it's it's the power is is amazing when you can research. Um, you, you know, different prices for cars and different price points and all of that. So that when you see a good deal, um, you know, it's a good deal. And if it's too good to be true, you, you should be aware about looking for reasons why it might be, you know, um, a little, a little bit too good of a deal. And, and so you have to be knowledgeable and you have to be patient, but it's um it's important to to really gather as much information as you can when you use these car buying services it makes it easier and also one other thing is that if you're a single mom or if you're you know young girl right out of college and you have your car and you think you want to sell it i mean you could put it on ebay years ago we used to use the classified ads and newsday ad on long island when i was you know back in the day when i first got married that was the way that you would advertise your car you put it in the newspaper in a classified ad section and then you're dealing with the public and that can get for me i love it because it's fun it's a game right i meet people um but you, you know what's happened now with the when you try and sell a car privately is there's just a bunch of scam artists out there that try and like rip you off and and i, I don't i they it's just crazy to me people yeah. will offer you super high amounts of money and then you know, there are all these different games that people play so one of the things i do like about these services is a you don't have to deal with the public and b that you you know you may not get quite as much money but if you really do need to sell your car quickly they are these car buying services are are very good as a matter of fact you'll find that a lot of traditional sort of bricks and mortar oem car dealerships today have also gotten into the game a lot of them because they were they had such a lack of cars during covid that they're now buying cars without you even you go to a volkswagen dealer and you want to buy a car you can just buy it you know you can sell your car to your local toyota dealer or your local volkswagen dealer so that's a whole new um sort of buying group that's out there as well yeah, during the chip shortage, actually, right when used car prices were skyrocketing two years ago, yeah. I actually, with my Mazda 3 at the time, which I liked a lot, but had some interesting, uh, let's just call it lemon issues, I actually, disclosing those, traded it into a BMW dealer uh, and then got a Mini, which I'm leasing currently. Uh, right. So they didn't care that it was a different brand. In fact, oh, I could have... Yeah. If I didn't want yeah. at least a mini then and there, I could have, because the used car market was so desperate at that point, I could have walked out with a check for my car. From right. A dealer. That's right. That's that's exactly right. So, uh, yeah, I mean, look, there's there's a lot of different ways that you can you, that you can um, either buy a car or sell a car. And 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 I think that it, it may seem overwhelming and complicated for those that just, you know, buy a car to get from point A to point B. And it's a hassle whenever they want to do a transaction. But, you know, what what I'm hoping maybe some people can glean from this conversation is a little bit of knowledge about what's the best way to, you know, buy a, uh, uh, buy a car, whether it's used or or, or brand new. So, yeah, so it yeah. sounds like, Dave, regardless of how you get it right, CarMax, if you're going to scour eBay and private party listings that it seems like you benefit when it comes to prices, if you look not just in a radius of your home, but nationwide. Yeah. A hundred percent. And and so when you do a search for a vehicle, first first thing you want to do is you want to figure out what what car do you want to buy? And, and are we talking used cars here? Or are we talking new cars here? 
um, because in in some some cases with certain hot cars, uh, you know, new cars, for example, the Ionic fives or the GV sixties that are tough to get right now, or even the ID fours, you know, if I was really hot to get one, I could care less where I buy my car. One of the things that dealerships will, um, always do if you need service, they will gladly service your car. And, you know, the salespeople will tell you, Oh, well, if you buy it here, you get all these perks and you get all these things. Maybe you do, but don't let that sway your, your broad based search. Cause the most important thing is you get the piece that you're looking for at the right price and any car anywhere in the United States is, I always tell people at most it's $1,200 away. So from, from California to Boston, you want to ship a car from California to Boston, it's 1200 bucks. You could even do it cheaper depending on if you're willing to wait a little bit of time. Mm-hmm. Um, in my case, I, I buy a car in California. I just tell Kyle, and he he goes out there and drives it drives it right back to me. But um, but no, all kidding aside, you know the um, the market should be search the entire nation for the car that you're looking for, unless it's something that is super common and you can buy it at any one of you know three four dealerships within twenty yeah. miles of your house. And generally, I think the safest model for doing that nationwide search is what we discussed initially, Carvana, CarMax, these these services that basically, you know, guarantee some level of condition with the car, uh, typically, as opposed to, let's say you buy Ionic 5 or something, uh, or a used car, an EV from a dealer who isn't that manufactured, they might not know a lot about the car or its condition. Yeah. Or like in your case, I know you bought Teslas from used car dealers who obviously- Yeah, yeah I've had um, two yeah. two bad experiences of that and, and I'm pretty knowledgeable. Um, I bought a P85 plus from like a used car lot somewhere in New Jersey with like, you know, um, just on the side of Route, route uh, 17 and I don't know, Paramus or one of those towns. And, yeah. and, and, you know, the guy, he was a car guy, but he wasn't a Tesla guy. And of course, you know, I asked him what the state of charge was on the car and he didn't even know what state of charge was. And, um, you know, I, I got there and they didn't really know anything about the car. And I asked them if it had FSD and they had no idea what I was talking about. Now, sometimes you can work that to your advantage. If, if you use car lot has a car and they don't really understand it and has FSD and, you know, wow, okay, maybe you can find a good deal, but you really, you you know, buyer beware, be very careful if you're buying a car from, from someone that doesn't really understand the product itself, Uh, you know, and, and there are services that you can use. You can hire local. um, There was one years ago. I don't know if they're still in business. It actually was a franchise Mac called lemon busters, and you could hire them to go and inspect a car before you bought it, a used car. And mm-hmm. I probably should be doing that myself yeah. after the experiences I've had. But, um, you know, I, and then and then I bought the I bought a, a 100D 2018 down in at an Infinity dealer. And I think it was Coral Gables, Florida or Miami. And, you know, that car, when they delivered the car, they they um, they didn't give me a charging cable. By the way, I just bought this new Tesla. They didn't give me a yeah. charging cable with this car. So. Yeah. I guess they've stopped providing them, but you know, I, I so I said, look, I, I need a charging cable. So they didn't know, they didn't know it didn't have one. My wife went and picked it up. And so yeah. they bought me a charging cable on, on eBay used. And it was, it was a European uh, CCS two charging cable. Oh no. He was like, what? you know, and he sent it to me. I was like, dude, this is not like, I can't use this here. And I called Kyle and Kyle's like, oh, good. I need one of those. And then, and then I ended up getting, I ended up, they ended up sending me the right one. But, you know, it's, it's uh, navigating uh, some of these used car dealers uh, pre-owned that don't know what they're doing with respect to Tesla is, is a bit challenging. I personally would not be, I'm not afraid to buy it, especially if the car is still warranted by the manufacturer. I wouldn't yeah. shy away from it, but I just put a little extra dose of caution on it um, than, than uh, perhaps um, otherwise. So, yeah, I like what you said earlier. It doesn't really matter where you buy the car because let's right. be honest, if it's a two or three year old, you know, Mach-E ID four Ionic five, it's still going to have a newish manufacturer warranty. And you're probably going to get your software updates, those vehicle specific services done at any, you know, manufactured dealer close to you. 
Uh, yeah. So let's say I'm here in Boulder and I find a great deal on Ionic 5 in South Carolina. I'll go yeah. get that Ionic 5, but I'm going to get it serviced at a Hyundai dealer somewhere near here. Yeah. Uh, that's how it works with traditional automakers, which is kind of what we've mostly been talking about. But here you are, right, sitting in your Model 3, and you mentioned you know, buying the Model S off the Infinity lot wasn't a great experience. When you're talking about some of these products, we really love, honestly, from startups, you know, well, it's weird to call Tesla a startup, but companies like Tesla or Rivian's new trucks, um, when you buy these direct to consumer vehicles, what does service look like for those? Service or, or the buying experience? Well, the buying experience is mainly what I want to talk about, but I know before people are buying, they might be curious, okay, I get, let's say I get on my hands on a Rivian or a Tesla whether it's from an official, you know, the Tesla used inventory site or it's eBay or CarMax or cars and bids, right? You get one servicing it. As I understand it with Tesla and Rivian, you are basically going through their service. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I can't speak to Rivian. I know anecdotally about it, but I can tell you that with respect to service with Tesla, everything is done on the app. So when you buy a Tesla, you you get you download a um, an app that you put on yeah. your phone, and for whether it's a three or a Y or or later model X's or S's, the phone ends up becoming a key um, for the car as opposed to having a fob. Uh, mm -hmm. And hey, by the way, little known fact: Do you know what fob stands for? I don't know. Nor do I. And if you look <laughs> it up. I don't think it stands for anything. If anybody knows what FOB stands for, please comment below. But I never thought it was an acronym. I've always, it's like a trinket or just a word for like a thing. Yeah, right? I yeah. think it's just a trinket. But like, how did that word come into existence that everyone calls it a FOB? You know, like, where did that come from? I don't know. Yeah. But um, I, I, if it doesn't have an acronym, we should make one up. I think people should comment about what FOB should stand for. But, um, you know, but it, it, it sounds, it sounds a little bit impersonal when you say or oh, i need to make a a a a, a, um, a service uh schedule service appointment go to the app but what ends up happening is the everything that goes in the app with respect to tesla gets documented there's an audit trail on every single interaction and the thing i like about tesla is that the service people that you end up dealing with whether they're at corporate or they're or they're at the service center they're not afraid to call you up or give you their cell phone number or text you even. Um, but everything happens within the app. And I find it incredibly efficient, albeit a little bit impersonal at first. I've yeah. really grown to like it. And I had a recent service experience with a an Audi dealer in Tampa for my daughter's car where it was not a good experience. Um, we ended up making it a good experience, but I had my daughter in tears over this situation with how they serviced her car. And all she was doing was getting an oil change. And mm -hmm. uh, and, it, and it just brought back sort of reminiscent, um, you know, bad feelings about how, how sometimes dealers, depending on the person you're dealing with and the individual you're dealing with, the level of service that you can get at dealers can vary very, you know, very widely. Whereas with some of these models, whether it's Lucid or Rivian or, or Tesla, it's all consistent. It's like, it's like you go into a McDonald's in Anaheim or you go into one in Portland, Maine, you order a Big Mac, it's a consistent experience. And, and, and I think that they have really perfected that. Tesla is an extremely well-oiled machine that not only sells cars, everything is done on the app, um, yeah. delivers cars, everything is done paperwork wise on the app for the most part. And, and then the service appointments, everything is done through the internet and the app. And it really works extremely well. Yeah, the downside is right because Teslas are so software specific. You are working with them. You're not taking your Tesla in to a Ford dealer who's going to know yeah. what to do with anything on it that's not purely mechanical or let's say like tire based. Um, right. But yes, I do find uh, it sounds like from your experiences, Kyle's experiences, Tesla has their service center built out. I mean, their service centers physically, their ability to go to your driveway, work on your yeah. car, uh, the ability to schedule through the app. It's all really they, well they done. Will come They'll come right to your house. Like I've had, 
multiple experiences where you just, you know, they come right to you, not for yeah. everything, but for a lot of things and they'll fix mm -hmm. the cars right in your driveway. It's, yeah. it's quite amazing. Now we also recently um, bought a car, an electric car from Genesis here at uh, Belize in, in Fairfield, Connecticut. And, and that experience was, I would say the polar opposite of Tesla, extremely personable, um, they can't do enough for you in terms of bending over backwards to make sure that the traditional, you, you know, person one to one relationship is there. They want to get to know you. Um, I, I met the I met the, um, the the general manager of the dealership and yeah. and, you know, th they really went over the car extremely well. As a matter of fact, when when I took delivery of Kathy's car last July, uh, I, I was blown away with the guy, Tim, who delivered the car. His knowledge yeah. was extremely good. And, and I'm not saying the traditional dealer model doesn't work, but Genesis, at least in my case, they had it down really well. And, and it's, it's for someone that doesn't really, you know, buy cars all that often, they handhold you there tremendously. Whereas yeah. Tesla, I think is the opposite. They want to get you in and out of there so fast. Yeah. Right. It's like, you know, it's kind of like, you know, one of the powerhouse steak dinners in midtown Manhattan mm -hmm. versus going and getting McDonald's and, and, you know, not to say that the quality of the product may be any different, but the way with which it's served and delivered to you is vastly different. And Genesis is just like, you know, uh, Mercedes, Lexus, BMW, Audi, they all have that down pat. And what I what I predict is, to a certain extent, that model is dying. It just is. Yeah. Um, well, let's add some nuance here and broaden it, right? Luxury dealers, typically the reputation, as you would hope for expensive cars, is that they're better, right? Like a, a Genesis dealer, Genesis being Hyundai Motor Group's luxury brand, is going to hopefully be a nicer place than a Hyundai or a Kia dealer. You're paying more for the car. They have higher margins. You're going to hope that it's more of right that boutique steakhouse experience. However, that's not even always the case. Kyle was just, he made a video uh, on his channel, I know, with his Sprinter van that at a Mercedes dealership, he had a terrible time servicing it and that's yeah. an expensive vehicle yeah yeah i mean i i get that and there will always be we should talk on average these are the experiences and yeah. you know in general um we're, we're making a lot of generalizations here but what's interesting about what genesis is doing is right now they're in the process of building out a dedicated bricks and mortar dealership network that is just de genesis now and they've got right few of them around the country, but for yeah. the most part, they're sold out of the same dealerships as Hyundai today. And, and so Hyundai salespeople may be different than Genesis salespeople, but they're really not. Um, it, it's, it's, there's a lot of crossover, but very soon they're going to become a standalone brand. And, uh, and, you know, they're really pouring money into the marketing side of it, which I think is interesting. Like today's, you know, today's, uh, pro golf tournament that's going to be yeah. on TV is sponsored by Genesis. Do yeah. you, do you, have you ever seen a commercial from Tesla? Have they no, ever done no marketing any budget famously, but there's Elon Musk's Twitter, which is his own thing, but yeah, that's true. That yeah. Just... So maybe, yeah. maybe they spent money in a different way, but you know, yeah. anyway, so, um, you know, I, we did, a, we did enjoy the experience of, uh, of the Genesis buying experience. And then, you know, there's a concierge service, you call them up and they'll come pick up the car and yeah. give you a loaner car and drop it off. And, you know, if you like that, that's, that's really unique that's, to some of these more luxury brands. So, yeah, it's unique, but let's say you're not, I, I love the GV60. It's a great vehicle. I know that, um, that your wife loves hers, but if, you know, you're looking at, a mach -E, which is a Ford product, or yep. the INIC 5, which is the same platform, but the Hyundai version of that Genesis, you're going to yep. be dealing with the non-luxury dealer. And those are generally, I mean, some of them I'm sure are good, but generally I've had pretty bad experiences. The reason, Dave, that I'm driving a Mini right now is because the BMW dealer, guess what? They were a lot friendlier and nicer to me than the um, Ford dealer who I was looking at a used GTI. Really? Looks like you know, it's a, I got to tell you, the difference, the difference between you and me is I would never let any salesperson, because I'm a salesperson, I would never yeah. let them sway my my buying decision. I'm going to know what I want first, right? Yeah. That's going to be the most important thing. What do I want first? 
And then once I figure out what I want, then I'm going to find out the most efficient way to buy that. And I don't really care about the buying experience. The buying experience is something that you will forget within a half hour of driving the car. It's to me, I, I think that the ongoing relationship that you have from a service standpoint is way more important than, you know, than, than, than the buying experience itself. But, but maybe that's, maybe you're saying the same thing as I am. I don't know. Well, but. everyone's different. And that's why we're making this video. If you like that personable buying experience, I'm yeah. sorry, Tesla and Rivian are going to be challenging for you. And maybe mm-hmm. you'll come to like it. Like I personally like that a lot because Jay, what I'm saying is that I hated that Ford dealer. Like working with them was terrible. They wouldn't take me seriously. Cause you know, I'm a young guy walking in there, getting a car. Yeah. They're like, who are you? You can't even test yeah. drive this. I go into BMW and I'm getting a mini, right? It's not a, it's an expensive car, but not that expensive. Uh, they let me test drive it. Let me do everything. It was just more pleasurable and sure the vehicle, yeah. like know what you want to buy, but for some people buying experience is very important. Yeah, and so no, if I it is, that. you want the personalized dealer experience, the best dealers that you're going to find probably are more towards the luxury space. And if you're out on your own looking on CarMax and elsewhere, then they're the great equalizers, right? Like you said, it's a McDonald's analogy. They're just the same nationwide, the same everywhere. So if you don't like that traditional dealer experience, I think the biggest takeaway here is that because of the internet and different business models today, there's just so many darn ways to buy a car. There are. And and the thing is, and let's try and break this down, Max, because I yeah. think we're we're, we're kind of going all over the place and that's fine because it, the, the market is, is all over the place. But, yeah. you know, but when you break it down, if you're going to buy a new car, right, there's, and you and I talked a little bit about, maybe you could do a better job of categorizing these things. But if you're going to buy a new electric vehicle today, to me, there are two models of that. There's the direct to consumer model, and then there's the traditional dealer model. And um, what I found within the traditional dealer model is the lack of knowledge. There's usually one guy at the Ford dealership that knows the Mustang Mach-E. Oh, and and by the way, he's off on Wednesdays, right? And so, you know, no one else really knows the difference between a kilowatt and a kilowatt hour. And and so, you know, you're going to be kind of out of luck in terms of finding someone who's really knowledgeable about the EVs. Now that's, that's changing. I know that our friend Tom Malogny does a lot of dealer training and there is a lot more appetite for, um, you know, dealers to invest in, in electric vehicles and the platforms to encourage their salespeople to learn more about these cars. But usually they're still selling gas cars when you're in those OEM sort of traditional, you know, uh, dealerships. And, and then you go over to the other model, which is the direct to consumer. And, and while it may be less, imper- you know, more impersonal, the amount of information that you can get from the experts when you get them either on the phone or in the app or however you're talking to them, is just like miles ahead. And, and that's where um, I see the market right now. It's, it's, it can be frustrating when you walk into a VW dealership in certain towns or certain cities and they just don't really know about the ID4, yeah. um, you know. The product can be great, but if you don't like the dealer model and the experience, you've had bad experiences with it, bad dealers in your area, it is what it is. Whereas with yeah, Tesla, they have a very mature, very built out, well-oiled apparatus for servicing, yes. maintaining your car. Rivian, less so. I know they want to get there, but they have to scale. They're a startup still. Um, mm-hmm. Similar things would apply for Lucid. Like I right now, let's say, I mean, theoretically, I was Mr. Moneybags. I had six figures. I could get a Lucid Air. My biggest hesitation would be how is servicing that going to look? If I'm in Kansas, how am I going to get that Lucid Air worked on? I, I don't yeah. know. Well, I will tell you that the sales model for Lucid right now is extremely hands-on, very personal. And I mean, I've gotten to know all the different guys at Lucid um, in on at the Miracle Mile, and they're, they're great, and they really believe in their product. And if you're showing interest in one of their cars, they're going to be all over you because look, it's a new company and they, they, they've got to make sales yeah. from a service standpoint. I don't know w- what that even means. Where do you take your car? If you have a problem, yeah. um, wh- who's going to service it? How are you going to get it there? Right. And I, and I think that that's kind of similar with Rivian right now as well. I don't know if you're, if you're, if you're up in, uh, you know, let's just say the middle of New Hampshire somewhere and you've got a Rivian, 
where are you taking that car? Do you have to go all the way to Boston? I don't, I yeah. don't really know. So um, let's break this down, Dave, because we've talked about a lot here, but I think the generalized advice that we've kind of gone over is that one, first of all, off the bat, just shopping for a car, regardless of how you do it, do it nationwide. Uh, find the flexibility to travel if possible, you know, seek the car out and everything. Uh, but when you look nationwide, you have more competitive prices. And then two, what we've been talking about, consider the product. Because if it's a Lucid, if it's a Tesla, if it's a Rivian, if you're buying, especially new, you're going to buy it through them. Uh, and that changes a lot of the experience of the product, perhaps for the better, but you have to consider that. So I would say just consider how you're buying it based off the product. We don't live yeah. in this world anymore where dealers are the only way to get a car. So that's, I think, the biggest wrinkle here is that like, depending on what car you're buying, ID4 and a Model Y, right? Product-wise, they're very similar, but buying experience and ownership-wise, they're so different. And that's yes. the big thing. Uh, yeah. Then number three, actually, what would your number three, Dave, be? If number one is search nationwide, number two is kind of know what you want, base, uh, expect your ownership experience to change based off the product you get, what would your kind of number three summary so, tip for this be? I think, I think with respect to some of the cars that, especially some of the EGMP platform cars from, from South Korea, whether it's a GV60, I've heard some horror stories of people buying cars, like, for example, they'll travel to Connecticut to buy a GV60 and, yeah. and then they'll bring it back to Alabama and then they'll have, you know, their windshield wipers will stop working and yeah. their local GV60 dealer, or I'm sorry, Genesis, Genesis. dealer yeah. will not service the car because they're not authorized. And so you, you, you know, when you broaden that search out, I would put a caveat on that, that realize that, your local Hyundai dealer, if you've bought an Ionic 5, because I don't know if Ionic 5s are even sold in every state yet in this country. I know that originally they were only sold in eight states, but it's now 2023. Yeah. But the Genesis GV60 is only sold in very few states. And so be, be a little bit careful there. You can buy the car, but if you bring it back, you may run into a little bit of a wrinkle. Um, yeah. Going beyond that sort of, sort of uh, just a little caveat, I think when you when you go over to buying a used or pre-owned car, that's when I would expand the search out to the entire country a lot more so than, you know, whether you're buying directly from the manufacturer or not. Um, but but you have to be sort of um, careful about who you're buying a car from. And so that if you're dealing with these, um, whether it's, you know, CarMax, Vroom or Carvana, Carvana, I don't even know, I, they, I've heard lots of different stories about their financial condition, but um, any one of these services, you're, you're, you're dealing with a sort of a, a much easier, more trustworthy um, vendor to sell you the car. With respect to buying pre-owned from, from Tesla, and also even new from Tesla, if you're looking for an inventory car from Tesla, you'll go online and you'll see that, for example, this car that I'm in right now, this Model 3, the, um, the base model, rear wheel drive, I, I wanted to pick it up and they said they didn't have one at Mount Kisco. So I was going to have to go out to Smithtown, Long Island to, to find one. And the one that they had on Smithtown, Long Island, it had the the 19 inch uh, wheels the uh, and I wanted the arrow specifically the 18s so I called Tesla's corporate and they have a database that is more accurate than what you'll see online and they said oh no we have a car in Mount Kisco that meets your exact requirements and so when I spoke to the sales manager up at, at Mount Kisco I've known for years he says no we don't have that car in inventory and and then he looked in another directory he goes oh wow we do have it here and i think what it turned out was that it was a customer's car and they lost their financing and then all of a sudden it turned up so don't give up even if you're looking for a tesla inventory car right now my understanding is that all the model y's are sold out for the entire first quarter mm -hmm. so for the next 45 days if you want to get a model y you're out of luck right yeah. and so uh model threes are out there but, but um, I would say, you know, just use, use those little pieces of advice as so well. Let's summarize that number three as I think availability is just a big point. I hope, I sincerely hope that the model of we had 10 years ago of, you know, 
electric cars will be being sold in California and Oregon or limited availability is over. But we know, right, Genesis is still doing it. They're trying to expand, but it's a big effort to get all your dealers on board for selling and servicing those cars. So consider availability for the car. Hopefully that's expanding, right? Tesla, their inventory sells out all the time. Rivian, their biggest problem as a company right now is they can't just make enough trucks. They need to make more. Uh, and then a lot of these other hot EVs, uh, even from traditional manufacturers, like the F-150 Lightning, are hard to get right now because of battery yeah. issues or recalls or other issues. So consider the availability of your car because uh, the beauty right now, I think of Model 3s, like the one you're sitting in, is there's just so darn many of them. So yeah. they've actually been able easier to get now, the prices are coming down. So always just factor in availability in your car buying decision. You know, like if I had my, um, or if, if, like if my parents had any choice about it, they would get a Rivian right now, but they don't wanna have to wait two years. And right now it's looking like if you order one, you have to. So I think always consider availability, particularly with EVs, because these vehicles require so many resources, so much supply that right now with current world events is always up in the air. Yeah. And the other thing I would say is that don't just get on a list and say, I'm waiting two years, work the phones, get to know the sales managers, especially like, for example, if it's a Hyundai, you're looking for an Ionic five because people order cars and then they all of a sudden the car comes in and then yeah. they're, they lost their job or whatever. And, and there are these quote lists you, that are at yeah. these dealerships, but who do you think really monitors those lists? I, 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 I have found that you can always find liquidity in the marketplace if you're at the right place at the right time and and keeping relationships up with people at the dealerships for the OEM sort of EVs, especially when they're in hot demand. You want to be top of mind so that, hey, Dave, we just got this limited Ionic 5 in today. Do you want it? OK, yes. And that I've seen a number of my friends, uh, Rob Saffer, who buddy of mine, he, bought, he got an EV6 like that down in uh, in in Miami just like that by by making sure that he stays in front of of the um of the people at the dealerships so you know don't don't, don't just get on a list and forget it keep working the phones that's a very good point point. and if you're like me and you hate that and you're willing to spend a little bit of extra money for these some of these hot vehicles like an r1s well guess what you can just eat ten thousand dollars and get a used one immediately from cars yeah. and bids or somewhere like that uh yeah. so there's always that option too right i mean generally the rules of economic supply here the more flexibility you have the longer you're willing to wait the better deal you can get uh, right but just yeah always keep one, those one in small mind. one small point is if you buy, let's say, an Ionic 5 or an ID4 that comes with free, you know, charging at EA for two years or three years or whatever it is, mm -hmm. and 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 if you buy that used, that does not transfer over to you as the second owner. It gets canceled. So yeah. if that's a big economic reason for you, just realize that make sure that you, you read the fine print on on the deal that um it usually only goes to the first buyer the new car buyer and yeah. then it gets canceled that you know that's just a small thing but similar situation for tax credits and i want to make a video on guide but if you've made it this far expect to find upcoming a video on the whole free charging promotion things with new evs because i have thoughts about those <laughs> oh i do too um, yeah. yeah yeah and you do too so maybe we can talk about that later but yeah there's there are some interesting new EV incentives that obviously won't apply if the car is used that you always have to consider. So yeah. I think we covered a lot of ground today, but um, yeah, we live in a brave, evolving new world of car buying uh, today, I think. I feel like we were all over the place today, but that's okay. You know, the market's that's how all we, over That's the place. sometimes how we do it. And I, it's yeah, been, I'm know. so glad that we finally had you on. Uh, it's been too long, I think. But yeah, people who've watched all the way through this video um, really need to check out your channel, Dave, out of Spec Dave. Yeah, well, listen, I appreciate the support. And all I would say is after you buy your EV, um, we're going to want to hear from you and your experience. Yeah. And also make sure that you actually uh, log all of your charging experiences on Rate Your Charge. With, if you don't use Twitter, you can use the Google Docs, you know, but at your rate, at your, your rate, your charge. And once you get your EV, this is what you're going to say, no matter how you buy it. That was easy. You know, so... Um, I love the easy button. You got to keep an easy button in your car. Dave, you just gave me my intro. Thank you for that. Um, you, never but... know when you, you never know when you're going to use the easy button, Max. You know what I mean? 
Yeah, and I, I wish Model 3s came with an easy button, but they don't. But I'm glad that you thought ahead and had that. So I'm telling you, you just go to Staples. You know, as a matter of fact, if you look online, they have some really funny buttons that say some nasty things. It's it's pretty cool. You can okay, you can well, actually before we get that, demonetized. <laughs> no, you can get you can actually get some where you can record whatever you want it to say. It's so uh -huh. funny. Okay. Anyway. Well, well Matt, love having you on, Dave. Thanks so much for having this conversation with me. Hope this was super absolutely. helpful for people. And uh like Dave said, we're here for you. So email us, comment what you want to see. You've got questions. We're, we're hoping to give you answers. And uh, thanks so much as always for watching. Yeah, Max, I also guide. want to say congrats on all the growth with Out of Spec Guide. I'm proud of what you're doing. You're doing a great yeah. job. And, you know, we're just trying to break it down. But realize it's not just this video, as Max said, call, reach out to us, you know, send us emails. We're here to help. Okay. Yeah, we've got a whole library of videos too that you can watch and that's evolving all the time as well. Excellent. Excellent. Max, you have a good day and everyone else. Thank you for joining and we'll talk to you soon.